the most dramatic political turn of events in decades. Protesters have burned government buildings, taken over airports and torn down statues. Dozens have been killed and hundreds more injured on both sides, protesters and police. Now the Kazakh president has asked Russia to send in troops on a peacekeeping mission. What started as an economic protest has quickly developed into something much bigger. So what are people protesting about in Kazakhstan? What's Russia got to do with it? And what could happen next? Kazakhstan was part of the Soviet Union, with other republics including Russia and Ukraine, until its collapse in 1991, when it became an independent state. That's when this man, Nursultan Nazarbayev, took charge. He ruled the country for nearly 30 years, before handing the presidency to his chosen successor, Kasim Jomar Tokayev, in 2019. Tokayev has been in charge ever since, but many believe that it's still Nazarbayev and his powerful family who pull the strings behind the scenes. But that all looks like it's changing. It started with the government removing a cap on energy prices on New Year's Day. That led to a doubling in the price of liquefied natural gas, a cheap alternative to petrol, which a lot of people in the poorer regions use to run their cars. Protests aren't that frequent in Kazakhstan, but people took to the streets over this price hike and over other wider socio-economic problems. And the unrest spread like lightning, with violent protests breaking out across the country, especially in the commercial capital of Almaty. Government buildings were set on fire, protesters seized the airport, and on the streets, police fired live rounds, tear gas and stun grenades into the crowds with casualties on both sides. The police have even joined in with some protests as anger has been directed towards the government. Cries of Shalket or Old Man Go have been heard at the protests aimed at Nazarbayev. This bronze statue of him was even torn down. This is undermining the whole government, and more importantly, it's an attack on our citizens who are asking me, as head of state, to urgently help them. Takayev has responded by sacking his government and removing Nazarbayev from his role as head of the powerful Security Council. He's also reinstated the energy cap, as well as promising a cap on food and electricity prices. But it's not clear if this will satisfy the protesters. Unrest has been simmering across Kazakhstan for decades, and it's difficult to see how the government will stop it. And the president's next move has been to call for help from neighboring countries, calling what's happening a terrorist threat. Kazakhstan has requested military assistance through an organization called the CSTO, the Collective Security Treaty Organization, a Russian-led defensive alliance, a similar idea to NATO. The Belarusian president, Alexander Lukashenko, has discussed the situation with his Kazakh and Russian counterparts in a phone call, and the White House has urged restraint. But this kind of unrest is the stuff of nightmares for Vladimir Putin. He doesn't want to see protesters gain the upper hand in authoritarian states like his own, and he'll do his utmost to make sure that they don't. So why does this all matter? These latest demonstrations are important because until now the country has been considered pretty stable, if still an authoritarian regime. But this unrest is a stark reminder for neighboring countries like Russia of how quickly the cracks can show. Former Soviet countries like Kazakhstan are still relatively closely aligned with Russia. This latest unrest follows similar anti-government protests in Belarus in 2020 and before that Ukraine in 2013. And if there's anything that Vladimir Putin hates, it's the idea of a color revolution where the people force concessions from their government.